Hi, everyone. So today, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit on basically how to run this special script that's going to clone a repository from another user um, and then create your own repository on your own GitHub uh, profile and everything like that, and then connect those two. Um, so what this basically replaces is the idea of a fork on GitHub. Um, the reason why I'm kind of showing this is that I have a few things about forks that don't make as much sense when you're doing lessons um, from like uh, learn.co and everything. So one, one thing I'll mention about forks is that um, they're really useful to say, hey, I took this uh, project and I'm kind of doing a different version of this on my own. And that makes it really obvious. However, for like lessons, it doesn't make as much sense because you really want to show that you're doing all this work. So a lot of lessons are just basically blank templates. And you want to basically add to that template, um, doing your own work and showing off your work. Um, one of the issues with forks then is that a fork is treated as a second class citizen on GitHub. Um, it will still show up as a repository. It'll show, still show you all the commits and stuff like that. You can interact with it like a normal repository. However, on GitHub, the big thing that's like a big difference on it that you'll see right away is that your contribution graph, which is this guy right here, um, which shows you all the different commits and all the different things you've been interacting on GitHub over the past year or years, um, doesn't show as obviously um, from a fork than uh, your own repository. Basically, you only get that one contribution for that fork. So if you've been doing like, you know, let's say 10 different commits, you know, on this one fork, you know, changing things up, making these all the amazing changes, uh, you really won't see it um, uh, on your contribution graph, which it's not an the biggest deal by itself, uh, but it's sort of like this first impression. It's not something that like someone's gonna keep you guys like, oh, well, their contribution graph, you know, only has, you know, 50 commits, you know, in the past month. You know, I don't know if this is the person we're gonna hire. It's more the fact that someone will see this and say, hey, like, this is something, um, like their first impression of you is like, oh, this person's really active on Git or GitHub. And so that's something you really wanna show. So I'm gonna show you basically how to do this. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit um, basically how to run this file that I kind of created, the shell script, um, to kind of make the process easier. But I'll also point out like how you can just manually, if you didn't want to run this shell script itself. So the first thing we need to do is actually get this file that I'm talking about. So I'm actually in this Flatiron, or Flatiron School Data Science School or Science Curriculum Resources. So if I go ahead and go to this repository and I go ahead and find the Git directory right here, you can go ahead and click this guy. And you'll see here is that I have um, an old tool and then I have some instructions as well and then get clone.sh. Uh, note that I might uh, be updating this, you know, uh, repository. I, I will be updating this repository for sure, but um, def like maybe also this git repo, I might add a few extra things or modify this git clone.sh. So just know a little bit this might change. But the main idea here is we're going to get this file and we're going to run this file. Um, you'll notice here that I actually have the steps on how to run this file in case you've forgotten everything like that just to give you kind of quick refresher i also show you how to do this manually so if you didn't want to run the script um, and you want to just type the code individually you can essentially do a git clone of the original repository you can then um, change the directory into that uh, now cloned repo and then what we're going to do we're going to set the remote um, which is this command right here git remote set origin um, origin is just basically how we identify this remote. And then we're going to change it to your repo on your GitHub. And that's the key step. And that will basically put it connected to you as if it's your own repository with all the commits from the previous part. Um, you'll still see who committed it and stuff like that. So it definitely uh, will be a little more obvious. And then we can go ahead and do a git push. And this git push dash u origin is just to make sure we set up to something called the upstream. Again, the whole idea of all these parts, we don't need to go over it right now. Maybe we'll go over it in the future. Okay. So let's go ahead and get this file. And um, there's a few ways you can do it. You can just go ahead and clone this repository um, on your own machine. Uh, you can just download the file directly. So I'm just gonna click on here and you'll see, you can see the actual code right here. We're not gonna go over this, exactly how this runs. This is more shell script, this is not uh, Python. Um, so one way you can do this is you can literally copy this file and then save it into another .sh file. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead and click raw, which basically will show this file right here. And you can see git clone.sh. Um, you can go ahead and save this and we can go ahead and save this into i'm going to put this in this my directory here but what you would do you would put it into wherever you would want to clone your repository in okay so let's go and do clone uh, clone.sh we'll save this right here okay and note that um, you can do something very similar on mac and everything like that we're going to these things should follow all the way through on uh, mac os so uh, the first thing i want to do 
is I actually want to find the repository that I want to clone, right? So we're going to go ahead, um, I'm going to actually go to learn.co, and on learn.co, if you haven't realized already, you can actually get every um, readme is actually um, just a GitHub uh, repository. So if you actually click this icon here, you will be taken to the repository that you might want to clone. So you say, oh, look, here we go. Here is the, um, the repository we actually want to try cloning. Uh, so if you click here, you can see there's a clone, download DS. Uh, the way the script is written, at least right now, is that you have to copy this HTTPS. Note that um, it starts with HTTPS. If for some reason you have use SSH, you might see this guy. We're not going to go over this part today. Um, and the, uh, the repository should work for either one of these, uh, depending how you have set up. But we're going to use HTTPS just because that's more common. So I'm going to copy this. You can just click this button and I'm going to copy this. And then we're going to go ahead and open up a terminal. So um, if you're on Windows, uh, you can go open up. Um, you know, well, the best thing to do is to get bash since git will be installed there, but you could potentially do this on command prompt. Um, I suggest using git bash just because it looks like a Unix um, emulation. Uh, basically, it's going to be much more common, especially for data science, to use that Unix style um, uh, interface. So for Mac, I'm just going to open up a terminal. Um, I have a little quick shortcut so I can bring this down. So you can see here, I'm on my, um, I have navigated to the correct um, directory. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and run the script. So just to kind of check what's in here, um, in the Unix, we can do ls-l, which will list all our files. And you can see here, I now have git clone sh. I could have just also done that ls, and you can see git clone sh. Okay, I'm going to clear this up so it doesn't get too confusing. And what I'm going to run, run now is go ahead and run this file and follow those directions. So um, an easy way to run this, and this should work in Windows too, you just do sh and then git clone sh. Um, .sh. Note that I tab just because it's a quick thing. Um, these are little quick things that you know, find out as you do more and more of your terminal work. So I'm going to run this file. And what it says right here, enter original GitHub repository uh, from GitHub and looks like HTTPS uh, colon slash slash github.com slash some user uh, repo name dot git. And note that that's exactly what we saw right here. We see that basically this is what this guy is showing us. So this is what we're going to paste into here. All right, so I paste it in there, I press enter, and it says ready to clone in um, this here directory. So now that's in this directory, users, you know, you guys, like that's my um, home, and then test on ground, okay? So it says control C if you want to quit, otherwise just press enter. So if you wanted, for example, like, oh shoot, that's not the right one I want to do, I'm in the wrong uh, directory, you can just do control C and that will stop the script. Um, otherwise, you can press enter. Honestly, you could probably press, you could press any uh, key and then press enter, but it's just looking for an enter. So now it's going to do, it's going to go ahead and do that git clone. So essentially it's running git clone and then this uh, URL right here. And you'll see that it says all the different steps and it says setting up your git repository as DSC welcome intro. So that means now in that folder, we'll actually see DSC welcome intro. Um, now it says now for your, for your repository URL from GitHub. If you haven't done so already, go to github.com and make a new empty repo. All right, I have a little typo there, but that's okay. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go and make our own repo so this will live there. So I'm going to go ahead and go to GitHub. Remember, this is my own GitHub. And a really quick thing you can just do is click this plus button, new repository, name the repository. So in this case, we'll just call it um, my tests. Okay. And um, public, private, you know, I would say uh, in the most part, keep things public just because unless you have a real reason to keep it private. Um, but the important part is just basically only name it. You can put a description here if you wanted to, but this is a test, but you might want to put a little extra description. And then don't click any of these things right here, initialize a repository with a readme or get ignore, stuff like this. We want our repo to be empty because we're going to push to it later on. Okay, so go ahead and create repository. And you'll see here, it creates a new repository. And you can see here, I now have a repository of my tests. Okay, but you can see here there's some extra steps to say, oh, you can do these different things. We're going to ignore all that. And all we really care about is this guy right here, HTTPS, github.com, Mr. Guy's language is my username, and then mytest.get. So we're going to go and copy this. And now we go back to our terminal, and we're going to paste it into this part. Remember, this is going to be for your repo. It's an empty repo. So we're going to put, um, go and paste it in here, and we're going to press Enter. And then it's just doing some quick verifying. It says, okay, this is what you're going to verify it to. The origin is going to be changed to the site. It's verifying my credentials. Uh, note that I put my fake email uh, here. Uh, this would be your normal credentials from uh, Git config, you know, whether your username and your email. Note that um, GitHub knows it's you based off of 
um, the email. So not so much the username, um, but really it's the email that identifies you as like you actually making those commits. So it's asking us to continue your, your GitHub repo. Um, so it's gonna now push um, our repo so that way it'll populate the stuff we see on this GitHub. All right, so I'm gonna go and press enter. And we should have a success and we kind of read this through. Numerating objects, just basically doing this git remote up our, and I'm sorry, git push. And you can see everything looks good, no failures. And we can now check in this directory. So I'm gonna clear this so we don't need to see all of this junk. And I'm just gonna do an ls-l just to kind of list it out and make it easier for us to read. And we can see our git clone still here and we can see DSC welcome entry. So now we can actually CD into DSC and we can actually see now um, our different files in here. Very cool. And we can also do a very quick uh, check, git remote dash v, which will list the remote. And then we should see our own repository with our username. And you can see that's exactly what we get. Cool. So let's check here. You'll notice that it's still empty. I just have to refresh this. So I refresh this. And you can see, hey, check that out. We have all the files that was from the original repo that we, oops, that's the right, original repo. This is the original repo. So you can see this is the original repo with all these commits right here. And you can see if I go ahead and click here on my repo, it has those commits too. So that's really cool. Um, and what's nice about this is that it'll keep that history on there. It'll keep all the files, but now it'll treat this as a separate uh, or as your own repository. So if I go back to my user profile and let that load, uh, you'll see that I'll have a contribution of making a new repository. So you can see here is that if I look right here, one contribution, hey, I created one repository. If I then were, for example, to create a new file, so if I were just to do something like, uh, I'm just gonna do something really quick, test.txt. I'm just making a new file, so you can see my files in there. I do a git status, git add, and you can see it's in there, so to get status. And you can see it's already, and I'll go ahead and git commit with my message, um, and I'll just put my, my own first commit. So I know this won't be the first commit to this, it will be your commit that with your name on it. So I'm gonna commit that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a git push. Well, I'll go, actually get status now, which means you already committed it, you can see it's empty. I can go ahead and do a git push, and you can see once it's successful, perfect. And now if I look at this, if I go ahead and refresh this, you'll see four commits right here and you'll see the most recent commit will be me. And there we go. Oh, <laughs> that's because I'm using, if you, if you notice, I changed my, um, if I do git uh, config, that's really funny. I didn't know that was gonna happen. <laughs> um, let's see, git config, uh, I'm do, I use global, global user dot email. You'll see it's fake at uh, email.com. This user probably uses also fake at email.com unless they commit. So it looks like it's there. That's why I said, again, use your own email that's going to be about your stuff. Um, but anyway, you would see that I have four commits and you can see uh, our first commit here, um, my own first commit. And you can see now the test.txt here, which is an empty file. All right. Well, hopefully that helps you guys uh, going through. Again, the way to find this file is simply just going to this Flatiron Data Science uh, School resources. I put a bunch of the resources that I have, um, I use for teaching and everything like that. Um, and we can go to this Git uh, directory and the git clone.sh. And then of course, if you forget exactly what to do, there's some directions here that can help walk you through it. And of course, I show you a little bit like basically how to do this yourself. So you could actually just go ahead, run each command replacing the repositories uh, repository URLs as needed. All right. Well, um, until next, next time, uh, happy learning.